Hello everybody. It's been a little while, but it's good to see you again. We've got lots of good stuff going on right now. We hope you can come to church now that church is open back up and we have Sunday school and children's church and everybody's welcome to come. So we'd love to have you. Let's start with Jesus Loves the Little Children. That one seems to be my kids' favorite, my two and three year olds. So Jesus Just loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Good job. That one, for some reason, is my kids, my little two and three year old class's favorite song. I think we sing it every single week. All right, we're going to do the B-I-B-L-E because all of the lessons that we have come from the Bible. And I want you to remember that. If they're not just storybook stories or stories from a storybook, they're from the Bible. These are things that God's told us in the Bible so we can learn how to behave and how to do things. So we're going to do that one now, okay? The uh, B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Bible. Good job. Good job. Then we have a new song. It's our new verse that we're learning. We're learning it in our Sunday school class and our Wednesday night class, but it's Psalms 18 2. And it's got some pictures. I don't even know if you can see them clear enough, but here's a big rock and here's a big strong muscle. And here's a city, a big rock city. We call it a fortress. And right up at the top, it's got a high tower, okay? Here's what they used in a, as a horn way back when. And then here's the word God. And I'll point to him to help you learn the words as we're learning this new verse, okay? Let's see. The Lord is my rock, rock. and my fortress, fortress and my, my deliverer, deliverer, my God. God. My strength in who I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my and my high tower. That's the new one we're going to do, and it's Psalm 18.2. So you can look it up in your, in your Bible and start learning the words, and we'll learn the tune over the next couple of weeks, okay? It's kind of a fun one. The kids like to do that, my high tower, too. So we'll just work on that a lot, all right? Okay, the last time that we had a class in here that was put on the computer, we were talking about a book, a special book, a book that has no words in it. Remember that? It has no words at all. It's got different color pages. There's a black and a red and a white and a yellow. And last time we talked about the yellow page. And do you remember what the yellow page was all about? It talked about a place called heaven, a place that God has made for us to go someday, for anybody who has asked Jesus to be their savior and asked to be God to forgive their sins, they can go to heaven someday. And remember all the things that weren't in heaven? There's no sin in heaven, there's no tears, there's no death, no sickness, there's no sun or moon, remember all that? But remember what was in heaven, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. There's mansions in heaven. Jesus has went to prepare us a mansion for everybody who trusts in him. There's a street of gold in heaven. That'll be pretty cool. The, the, book, the Lamb's Book of Life is there. Everybody who believes in Jesus and has been saved has their name written in it. And there's angels. And Jesus is going to be up there. We're going to get to actually see Jesus up in heaven. One of the things that's going to be in heaven is a tree. There's several different kinds of trees up there. And today we're going to talk about a couple of those trees. We're going to back up. We talked about what heaven's like, but how do we get there? What do we do? What happens? What is sin? And we're going to start with the very first part of the Bible when God made everything. He made everything just by speaking it. He said, let there be trees and there were trees or let there be animals and there were animals and it was a very special garden 
the bears, you could pet a bear anytime you wanted to. There were lions and elephants and all sorts of animals and you could just pet them. It was beautiful garden. And God made a very special man. His name was Adam. He was the first man, the very first man. And he put him in this very special garden. And then he gave him a wife. Her name was Eve. So Adam and Eve lived in this garden. And God gave them a rule, one rule. That's all he had. they had to obey was just one rule. And that rule was, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That seems like a simple thing to do, wouldn't it be? To just obey that one rule. And it was a, such a special garden that God, the Bible says God walked with Adam and Eve in the evening and talked to them. Wouldn't that be absolutely cool to be able to, to be walking with God in the evening and to just talk to him and you could ask him whatever questions? Anything you wanted, you could talk to him about. But there was no sin at that point. Well, one day there was a serpent in the garden that God had made. It was a really pretty serpent, I think. But that serpent, the Satan, the devil, had it talked to Eve. It talked to Eve and it says, Eve, don't you think you can eat of that tree? It says, can you eat of all the trees? And she said, all but one. And he says, I think you can eat of that. That tree will make you like gods. That would be a good one. And she saw that it was good to eat, and she decided, hmm, God said we shouldn't eat it, but maybe I could. And she didn't wait till the evening to ask God, can I, can I have a bite of that? She went ahead and took a bite of it. And then she gave Adam, and he knew he wasn't supposed to eat of that fruit also. Whatever the fruit was, they both ate it and immediately knew, they knew that they had disobeyed. Now, when you disobey sometimes, what do you want to do? You want to hide from mom and dad because you know that they're going to come looking and find out you, what you did, and then you're going to be in trouble. And that's what Adam and Eve wanted to do. They wanted to hide. They're like, oh no, God's going to, I don't want a, a God to see us because we, we disobeyed him. Well, God knew where they were at. He knew that they had disobeyed. But when he came in the evening and he was starting to look for him, he says, where are you? Where are you? And Adam and Eve were hiding. And God says, why are you hiding? He already knew because he knows everything. You can't hide any sin from God. And Adam, he does what he did what we do sometimes. He blamed Eve and he says, Eve made me eat of that apple or that fruit. I don't know if it was an apple, but Eve talked me into eating that. Well, Adam made the choice all by himself. He sinned. That's when we disobey or do anything that displeases God. He sinned. When God asked Eve, she's like, oh, well, the, the serpent, he made me do it. She blamed the serpent, even though she did it herself. And when we blame somebody else for doing something wrong that we did, we're sinning too, just like they did. Well, God immediately made them some clothes. He killed an animal and he made them some clothes. And because of their sin, he, they can't go to heaven. They never would get to go to heaven. But God said, I'm going to make a way. I'm going to have my son, the Lord Jesus, come die and pay for that penalty for the sin that you guys did. I'm gonna, he's gonna die so anybody can go to heaven, but they have to accept that gift that I have given them. I'm sad that I can no longer come to the garden and just walk and talk with you, but I am gonna make a way so that you can go to heaven someday to that wonderful place. Well, God had to get him out of the garden then. There's the clothes that he made, some kind of, he killed an animal for some clothes and then he told them they had to leave that beautiful garden. From now on, they were going to have to work really hard. They'd have thorns and pain and sickness. None of that was ever in the garden. But because they disobeyed God, they had to leave. And God put an angel with a flaming sword in front of the garden so they could never go back to that wonderful garden again. God, was, God loved them so much 
that he provided a way so that they could go to heaven, but he had to punish them for their sin. All of us sin, we all do things that don't please God. If we do things that don't please mom and dad, it's a good bet that it's not pleasing God either. We all do things like that. And we all have to realize that Jesus paid that price for us so that we can go to heaven someday. So I want you to think about that. And if you have more questions, you can call our pastor or, or our church and you can find out more information about how to get to heaven because Jesus paid for that. And we have to know that we're sinners and that we can accept that so we can go to that wonderful place that he's prepared for us. That's it for today. I want to finish by singing Jesus loves me because he loves us so much that he died for us. And that's what it's all about, okay? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Goodbye.